What's up everyone, I am Jason C. And today I got something that I think will make you second guess what you think you know about George Dickel Tennessee Whiskey. This is the new George Dickel 15 year single barrel. It's not a store pick, but a unique and ultra aged Tennessee whiskey that could change your mind for anyone out there that's not exactly a George Dickel Tennessee whiskey fan. Let's find out why here in the Mash and Drum. George Dickel for a while now has been clearly sitting on stocks of well-aged whiskey. The releases of their bottled and bonds the last couple of years, a 13 and an 11 year, both for great prices, mind you, and the ever-growing list of brands relying on older source Tennessee whiskey that we buy for upwards of $200 or more show that some big brands and whiskey enthusiasts don't mind it so much in a blend, but for some reason they do mind it when it's on its own. So back in November 2020, the George Dickel Tennessee whiskey brand produced at Cascade Hollow Distilling, under the watchful eye of brilliant master distiller Nicole Austin, unveiled a new single barrel offering that's been aged for 15 years. This is aged at least 15 years and comes packaged in the same squat bottle design as the Barrel Select. Now, according to those behind it, it's been made available to purchase by the bottle from retailers or by the barrel directly from the distillery for a revamped single barrel program. Those who order a barrel are able to add custom branding and messaging to their bottles and choose from the highest proof options that were stored in the top tiers of the warehouse. Those buying the bottle can expect to see a variety of proofs of the whiskey at their specific retailers. The best part, this is available for only around 60 bucks per 750 milliliter bottle. Initial states it was rolled out to include California, Delaware, Florida, Georgia, Tennessee, and Texas. Additional markets have already been added for 2021. Proofs will vary on this a lot with the range hovering between 40% and 52.3% ABV. So I'm gonna pour this right now. Ooh. It already smells good. I'm telling you guys, this, this will surprise you. But before we dive in, I do want to talk a little bit about George Dickel, who he was. I want to thank Michael Veach, the historian, for finding such good info on who he was. I actually learned a lot because, um, you know, I, you guys know I'm a bourbon nerd and a, and a whiskey geek, and I love finding out different information. Check out bourbonveach.com to uh, find some really cool articles that Michael Veach has uh, created uh, to learn a lot about, you know, the history of whiskey. Uh, and also because George Dickel was a great American success story. He was born in Germany in 1818 as George Augustus Dickel. He immigrates to the United States at the age of 26. He starts a business in Nashville, Tennessee in 1853. He then marries a Tennessee-born woman of German descent, Augusta Banzer. Now by 1855, Dickel made his living as a cobbler fashioning shoes and boots in Nashville. Fast forward and George enters the whiskey business in 1866 with a liquor store at 125 Market Street in Nashville, Tennessee. He hires Meyer Saltzcotter as well as the two brothers, Victor and Emil Schwab. They purchase whiskey from local distillers and quickly earn a reputation for picking only the finest, most mellow spirits for their own label. The next year, they move their store to a larger location at 23 South Market, and as the business continues to grow, they move for the third time in three years to the corner of Church and Market. Now, in 1870, George A. Dickel and Mayor Saltzkotter collaborate to form the George A. Dickel Company. Now, over time, the family's reputation as whiskey dealers just exploded over the next several years. Now, in 1878, a new distillery was constructed in neighboring Coffee County in Cascade Hollow. Dickel becomes a huge fan, starts purchasing a large share of that distillery's production. Victor Schwab becomes a partner in the George A. Dickel and Company in 1881. Now, George particularly likes the whiskey made in the colder winter months. The company starts advertising the Cascade Tennessee whiskey as the whiskey that is mellow as moonlight. 
So Salt Cotta retires from the whiskey business in 1888 due to failing health and is deceased within two years. George also begins to withdraw from the business because of declining health. And he had a pretty bad fall from a horse, which made things even worse. So the 70 year old George relies more and more upon his brother-in-law and partner to run the business. After George's death in 1894, his widow Augusta and his partner Victor inherit George A. Dickel and Company. By the turn of the century, Swab hires the Darcy advertising firm of St. Louis to advertise for them nationally and internationally. So with the rapid growth, the distillery is enlarged during 1904 to meet growing demand. But of course, as we all know, Prohibition comes to Tennessee in 1910. The distilleries are given 12 months to pack up and leave the state. Victor Schwab then travels to Louisville and enters into contract with none other than Arthur Philip Stitzel to produce Cascade whiskey. To ensure the quality of the whiskey remained consistent in the bottle, Schwab pays for a charcoal mellowing vat to be built at the Stitzel distillery. So on the days that Stitzel is not brewing whiskey, Schwab brings his crew in from Tennessee to make Cascade. Now, as you know, the entire industry is effectively shut down with the exception of selling medicinal and baking spirits. Stitzel Distillery is able to obtain a license to become one of those six firms permitted to distribute medicinal spirits during Prohibition. Cascade begins to be sold as medicine in 1920. After the repeal of Prohibition in 1933, Cascade Whiskey lands briefly at the new Stitzel Weller Distillery in Louisville, Kentucky. The family ultimately sells the rights to the Shenley Distilleries in 1937. So that means Shenley's production of Cascade Whiskey happened at the George T. Stagg Distillery in Frankfort, Kentucky, and did not include the Lincoln County charcoal filtering process. The brand then becomes Cascade Bourbon and is distributed locally and nationally. In 1958, Shenley opens a new Cascade Hollow Distillery, very close to where the original distillery stood before Prohibition. The charcoal filtering process is reintroduced to the whiskey production process and to avoid confusion in the market, Shenley releases the whiskey from this new distillery simply as George A. Dickel Tennessee Whiskey. Now it took a long time to get to the market and it didn't make its debut till 1964, which when you think about it is not that long ago. It is bottled as Dickel Black Label Old Number 8 and Dickel Tan Label Superior Number 12 the bottles that you actually see here. And remember the 12 and the eight are not age statements. A lot of people think they are. Those are just our recipe numbers. So today the brand is still distilled and aged in Cascade Hollow near Tullahoma, Tennessee. It is owned by Diageo where that distinct Lincoln County process they use is as distinctive as the Dickel flavor profile itself. So hope you learned a little bit. Let's get into the review finally for the George Dickel 15 year. Okay, so on the nose guys, this, it does, it does have that that Lincoln County process that Dickel uses, it does have a wave of that type of flavor profile. You know, they call it the Flintstone vitamin, they call it minerality, whatever you want to call it. But it's not as forward as you would think, especially with something this high age from George Dickel. This is loaded with just tons of caramel and just really nice sweet oak. That, and this is what you want from a really well-aged whiskey. Baking spices all over this thing. I mean, we're talking cinnamon, clove, Oh my God. There's like this vanilla almond note on the nose that absolutely delicious. The best part of this nose though is this candied orange note that I'm getting. It, it's like, I'm, I'm not sure how to explain it. It's, I mean, it's almost like it's wrapped up in here. Oh my God, it's so sweet. It literally smells like a candy shop. There's a, there's a slight hint of smoke, but the candied orange note on this thing is so damn delicious. It's so strong too. Yeah, total candied orange. It almost smells like a really sweet cereal too. There's a really like rich sweetness to it. Just incredible on the nose. It's very inviting, very sweet, very candy forward. Like I said, a wave of that George Dickel, you know, that, that minerality there, the Lincoln County process, but it's really not that prevalent. It reminds me a lot of what the Bottled and Bond 11 year that was released uh, last year, you know, what that profile was a little bit like, which I was a huge fan of. Let's go for a sip. It's so sweet and savory at the same time. So mine, um, this is on the high end. I got this one, this is 52.3% ABV. So 104.6 proof. It's got a nice proof point to it, a little bit spicy, not overly spicy. This is more coming through as like herbal spice and baking spice, not really proof heavy, but the flavor is just so rich. Let's go for our second sip here. There's like a cinnamon roll thing going on with like rich vanilla icing, 
the cinnamon. There's like a like a dough, like a doughy bread type thing going on. Go for another sip. Just on the very back end, I got this rich like hot chocolate note. I mean, you mix that with the rich caramels, the candied orange peels. There's a slight like brown butter note in there too. A little bit of nuttiness. This, it's really, really rich. Like there's just so much flavor in here, like a 15 year old Tennessee whiskey. I mean, this is, this is what you want. And for 60 bucks, no less. It's, it's pretty crazy. Let's uh, take a couple more sips. Let's talk about the finish. All right, so the finish for me is where you get a little bit of that chocolate. More of the, the baking spices definitely come to the forefront, the cinnamon, the clove. You get a little hint of that orange peel, but you know, you get a little bit of that, a little bit of like rye spice there, which is really nice. It just kind of gives you enough pepper and lingering um, like spice just to kind of make it interesting. You know, even though it's just over 100 proof, this, the, the finish on this does not go away. This is lingering, it's peppery, it's spicy, it's sweet, it's chocolatey. <laughs> I can just keep kind of going on with this. Um, again, the more you sip on this, it, I think it really is gonna depend on your palate of whether or not how much more of that, that Dickel, that George Dickel minerality that you're gonna get. But for me, you know, again, it reminded me a lot of the 11 year bottle and bond from last year. This was a little bit more caramel forward, way more brown sugar forward. The caramel, vanilla, like candied orange peels, freaking sick. Let's go for another sip of this one. Yeah, from front to back. Front of the palate, smacked with just caramel, sweet oak, a lot of vanilla. Mid palate, here comes the candied oranges, the baking spices, cinnamon, clove, nutmeg. I mean, all those just rich flavors. Then on the back of the palate, here comes that wave of spice. A little bit of spicy black pepper comes in a little bit more of the candied orange peels and then this chocolate this little like wave of like hot chocolate comes in uh, to kind of blend with that peppery spice I mean come on this is this is what I want in a whiskey whether it's a dickel an Irish whiskey a scotch a bourbon whatever it may be this is what I want something rich complex nice peppery finish that's not boring doesn't go away after two sips this is the total package and I know this is a single barrel and single barrels will vary. What I will say is if you can find one of these that's in the higher proof range, uh, you will not be, you know, you will not be sorry that you found that one because I know there are some that are at like the 80 proof range. Um, I probably wouldn't be as interested in that. I would, I would assume you would get a little bit more of that George Dickel funk to it. Whereas this is just so rich. It's mouth coating. It's got everything you want. And like I said, I know it's a single barrel, but it's really hard to imagine a better value than this right now, except, you know, maybe like Elijah Craig Barrel Proof or, um, you know, Rare Breed or some of those other, you know, great bourbons that are great values. But for Tennessee whiskey and just an overall whiskey in the market, this is, this is a hitter. All right, guys, final breakdown. Price is 60. Availability, as I mentioned, initial states that were rolled out were California, Delaware, Florida, Georgia, Tennessee, and Texas. Additional markets have been added for 2021, but couldn't find exactly where those are. Value on this, as you guys know, it's very high in my opinion. This being 15 years and less than half the price of bourbons and other whiskeys coming out that are sometimes a lot younger, makes this one one of the best values in whiskey overall. What's the most I'd pay? I'd pay up to 80 for this. Again, looking at today's market, uh, 15 year anything for the most part is usually well north of 100 bucks. Now to get this at MSRP for 60 is amazing, but I'm such a fan of this, I'd be willing to pay a little bit more to get another. Now, is this a recommend? Yes, yes, and yes. Why? Flavor and value combine to bring an amazing sipping experience for anyone to enjoy. Now, remember in the beginning of the video when I said this? and the ever-growing list of brands relying on older source Tennessee whiskey that we buy for upwards of $200 or more show that some big brands and whiskey enthusiasts don't mind it so much in a blend, but for some reason they do mind it when it's on its own. So think about that. Barrel Craft Spirits, Bardstown Bourbon Company, Joseph Magnus, Bidman Tucker, and some others that I'm probably forgetting. Popular brands like these use Dickel in their blends and charge a lot more for it than this $60 gem. So why buy those and not buy this, just because the label says George Dickel on it. 
Now I do understand that Dickel will just not be a flavor profile that some people like and maybe blended the right way. You can hide it a bit, but I think on some level we are seeing either a shift in flavor profile for these special releases that are appealing to more enthusiasts and some great work being done by Nicole Austin and the team at Cascade Hollow. So this bottle is a really welcome and unexpected gem for me. And if you could find this one that's at 104.6 proof, I think this particular bottle will not only maybe change your mind a bit about George Dickel, but dare I say, you might also want to go out and buy a second one of these. All right, guys, well, hope you enjoyed this review for the brand new George Dickel Tennessee Wisco 15 year single barrel. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the subscribe button below. Please hit the like button. If you haven't yet, find me on Instagram, find me on Twitter. Let me know if you've had this one yet, if you found one, uh, what you think of it. Uh, the higher proof for me is definitely the way to go. Uh, again, for 60 bucks, a 15 year old whiskey with this much complexity and flavor. So with that, as I always say, it's not about the whiskey, it's the people you share it with. So cheers. Damn, Dickel for the win. Cheers, everybody.